Okay, this is a Telemark 274-0150-1 emitter. And we will start probably with getting some of the subcomponents out of the way so we're not tripping over them. You got a filament clamp going into the right bus bar, or right cathode block, pardon me. And you got filament clamp left side, and there's two long side and a short side to it. Put the long side because we got a seven and a half turn filament. Now we're going to grab 632 by half inch screw and a flat washer. Insulator collar, locate your second, 632 by half inch, flat washer, insulator collar, and you grab, and you can do 632 by quarter inch, and you can start putting your mount bracket and your U bracket together, noting that there's a high side and a, that the screw hole is off center. You want long side to the bottom 632 by quarter inch and you need the 516 632 okay locate your second 632 by 516th screw. Start your other high voltage insulator and HV shield. And you just get them all snugged up and get them out of the way. Keep some of the parts from becoming a nuisance. Put that back down. I take the tip of my screwdriver and I'll start. The titanium screws that hold the filament clamps into the cathode blocks. You don't have to get them tight. You just, again, set yourself up for the build. Put that back in its home. And you can locate the L insulator and the cathode block right side and the right side bus bar and then the half inch 632 screws with the insulator collars on them you set up earlier and get them started in there they're going to want to be lined up proper or risk damaging some ceramics then you grab your second one get it started all right don't log it down don't need to get carried away with it right now left hand cathode block Left bus bar, 632 by 38 screw. Set that down. Get it all locked. Get it all set in position. Don't, don't lock it down again. Just get them all started. Get them where you want them. Put that down. And you grab a feeler gauge. In this case, they're set up for 30 thousandths. So you can gap the cathode blocks at 30 thousandths. Then we grab our torque wrench. And you just snug them all down. Get them all in a good spot there. And you got them there. Now you pinch on the cathode blocks, forcing them against the feeler gauge. And you lock it all down. And there's the last one there. And then you locate a filament. And set it in your cathode box between the clamps and you gotta grab the screwdriver and then you just hold your thumb on it keep it kind of located you don't need to apply a lot of force or do anything just get it all into place and then you make sure you're good to go Just don't like that. There you go. There you go. You can lock. 
you snug that up, and then you snug that up, and then you go back to the left one, lock it down, kind of push down there, lock that down. Your filament should be in place where it needs to be. Locate your beam former and your insulator cross. Put that in its home. Put your beam former in place. Grab your Allen wrench. Should have one last titanium screw with 3 sixteenths. And you can snug that into place. Grab your torque wrench again. I put my thumb over here on the side, pushing to the side and down to square it up against the cathode box. Then lock that down into place. Then you got to check your filament. Make sure you're kind of square in there. And then your gap between the beam former and the filament windings should be 25 to 30 thousandths, and we're set at 30, so it's Then you grab your previously assembled mounting. Got another set of HV shields and a 632 by 38 screw. Get that started, get that started. Again, you don't want to tighten anything down, you just want to locate stuff. One more 632 by 3 8 should be your last one. And you gotta kinda put that into place, put that into place, grab that. Get this started again, you don't want to, and there's nothing locked down, it's all kinda loose fit. Grab your anode, put that into place. Should have two 632 by quarter inch screws remaining. Get that started. You don't want to again lock it down or anything. You're just setting up now. Now you get that all snugged up. Put that down. Got a metal block here. Just want a 90 degree angle so you can get up underneath that anode. Push down on the anode. Or push up on the anode and down on the mounting. And then you just snug them up. Then you lock that. And you lock that one down. Move that off to the side. You don't need it anymore. And then you can grab your torque wrench and you, you put your finger, your thumb in there. You want to push up on the HV shields down on the mount. Lock that down. Lock that down. Roll it around, put your thumb across the, the bus bars, and hold the mount, force the bus bars down, kind of help square everything up. Now this is kind of a process here because nothing wants to lock down because of the two insulator shields. So you snug them up a little bit there, and then you push the thumb across the bus bars again, fingers on the mounts, start rolling that around. Snug it back up, snug it back up. You probably have to do this. See, then you got that one and you got that one. So then you want to lock that one down while you're pushing your thumb across the bus bars again. And this one doesn't want to cooperate, which happens once in a while. But there it goes. Okay, then you go back and you snug those down in your torque wrench. And then you, in this case, we're going to probably have to do some adjusting because the you know, beam form is down a little low when there's no, it's not really parallel across. So we'll have to loosen that, loosen that, push down on the top of the anode in this little home, I'm using this to play in the screw holes on the anode to adjust it. 
Make sure it's nice and snug. So tighten it down. Push that into play. And that should be relatively serviceable. Well, we're still a little off there. Let me try this one more time for us. There we go. That should get you a serviceable emitter. Your beamformer and your anode are pretty much parallel with one another.